what is up my youtube family welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then it's just welcome to my channel now welcome back go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed unless of course your taste level is lacking girl and if that's the case then you're not the only one and it's okay now, i'm not going to do too much talking in the beginning but one thing i am going to talk about one thing i am going to point out is the tan lines you see it girl you see it. And if you want to just refer to me going forward as a um, deep caramel, I'm perfectly fine with that. I feel like it's very appropriate. It's very fitting. It's definitely in line with who I am as a person. And so, yeah, feel free. Y'all, the other day, I got a little private pool rented out for me and some of my friends with dogs. When we went and took our dogs swimming, like we swam with them. It was so much fun. Y'all, if you follow me on Instagram, you already know that Bella's birthday is next month. And my whole plan has been to throw her a pool party. Y'all voted on her cute little um bathing suit for her birthday i actually got her one out of the store for this little impromptu swim this is the top and the little bottoms is so cute but she didn't end up wearing it because my niece had actually taken it out of the bag before we left to go to the pool i forgot to put it back in and bella had on uh, a swim vest anyway so it was fine however what was not fine is bella when she got in that water Bella overall enjoyed the day like she had fun with the other dogs and the people and just running around the backyard but she was not here for the water she just was not literally every bit of this is unnecessary I'm literally holding her above the water and she is trying to save her life it does not need saving you're gonna be so tired come on let's go over here take it let's just go to the stairs I mean Bella where you going mama not the hot tub come on Look, you can literally stand up right here. Literally. Feet on the ground. Yes, love. She never got comfortable at all with the water. And so now I'm second guessing if having a pool party is a good idea. Granted, she did have fun. But I think it was just because of everything else going on. Blue, however, you know, blue, blue swims like a little water pig, okay? Blue is a better swimmer than all of us, girl. He literally just did a whole lap. He had a ball. I don't know what's going on with my lighting today, but hopefully that little adjustment is a little better. All right, that's enough chit chat for the opening. All right, that's enough. That's enough little sad talk. Let's get into today's case. This case actually is one that I made a mental note of um, over a year ago. And I was like, I have to talk about this. But for whatever reason, I just... I kind of go out with vibes as far as cases. And I... Didn't feel like it was the time until now for whatever reason. As you can tell by the title, it is the case of Katarzyna Zawada. And I'm hoping I pronounced that right because I did look up, you know, like the little Google pronounced this for me. Little, little feature. And that's what they said it was. So hopefully Google did not fail me. And without further ado, let's just get into what happened. So on November 12th of 1998, which is oddly my birthday, 23-year-old Katarzyna has made plans to meet her mother at a doctor's office. Now, her mother had encouraged her to make this appointment due to her history with depression that had semi-recently been triggered by her father's passing two years prior. The two of them were very close. They had a very loving relationship. And so losing her father was a, a huge emotional blow. In addition to her emotional struggle, she had recently become extremely withdrawn from all of her friends and family. Most times she did not want to be bothered with. She was spending the bulk of her free time just alone listening to music or just completely out of sight doing her own thing. And this doctor's visit is actually a meeting with a psychiatrist, which she'd agree was probably necessary and could be beneficial to her, her mental state and well-being overall. However, when the day comes, Katarzyna does not show up to the appointment. Now, she had not at all been opposed to or reluctant to get help. She had gotten help for her issues in the past. So her mother is alarmed when not only does she stand her up at the doctor's office, but she's also become unreachable. And that is not like her daughter. Fearing something bad may have happened to her daughter, she goes to the police station to report her missing. And after answering a couple of questions, the police conclude that there really isn't much cause for concern here. She is a young college student. Maybe she's stressed. Maybe she's overwhelmed. 
It's possible that she really did not want to see the doctor despite her mother believing that she was not opposed to it. They basically just tell her, you know, college students, they break away all of the time. She will most likely turn back up when she's ready. Just wait it out. But she knows her daughter and she has a terrible gut feeling that something is not right. Like that is not what is going on here. Unfortunately though, it seems that um, if she wants some answers as to what happened to her daughter or where she is, she would have to find them without the help of the police. She finds absolutely nothing of significance. So she doubles back to the police who finally agree to look into her daughter's disappearance. Now, recently, Katarzyna had done some things that would be considered outside of her character, aside from her going and isolating herself from everybody. She is currently studying religion at a university, so they go and speak with some of the students there and the staff, which is not all that helpful, considering the fact that Katarzyna is not at all that social. She rarely speaks to her peers, and the only time that she really interacts with the staff there is when it's absolutely necessary. But they do find something out that is somewhat interesting and potentially helpful. For the past three weeks, she had not been to any of her classes. Up until that point, her attendance had been really good and then she just seemingly disappeared. But this was before she had gone missing from home, even though she was still leaving home as if she was going to her classes. So as far as police are concerned, at this point, one of two things have occurred. Either she has gone away and taken her life somewhere and has yet to be discovered, or she had begun seeing somebody and had run away to be with them. When they present to her mother the two possible scenarios, she is not convinced that either of them are what has happened here. Neither of them sound like her daughter. So this basically just puts her right back to square one. In the following weeks, investigators get no closer to solving the disappearance and they seemingly become less interested in doing so over time. A little under two months later, on January 6th of 1999, a tugboat captain and his crew are cruising the Vistula River when he hears something get jammed inside the propeller, which ultimately stops the motor of the boat. He and a few of the crew members go to investigate. Tree limbs oftentimes jam the propeller, and simply pulling them out, which takes just a matter of minutes, usually solves the problem and gets them on their way. But today, that will not be the case. Unable to see any limbs sticking out, they decide to remove the latch to get a better look at what it is. And almost immediately, they are hit with this pungent and unfamiliar odor that none of them had smelled before. The smell is almost intolerable, but whatever it is, they can see wrapped tightly around the propeller blades and it is wrapped tight, almost like a giant rubber band. Now they can see one like piece that is the end of whatever this is. And so they grab a hold of it. And as they slowly begin to tug on it, it begins to unwind from the propeller. Having no idea what this is or what it could be, they continue to pull it loose. And once it's completely freed, it appears to be this huge rubber like sack. Now, why it smell like that? They don't know, but they drop it on the deck and figure, you know, problem solved, it's out. That is until one of the crew members spots a human ear attached to this rubber sack. So, of course, they go to the authorities with it, and once it is analyzed, it is determined that this is not a rubber sack at all. It is actually the very carefully and skillfully removed skin of a young woman. It is also determined that this skin had to have been in the water for at least two weeks, but no more than three. While specialists work to identify or determine who this skin belongs to, the police scour the river looking for anything else that could be considered evidence or the rest of this woman. Because the skin was literally just from the groin area up the torso, a little bit past the neck and then just this section, including the ear on one side. There was nothing inside of the skin at all. There were no arms, no legs, nothing. It was literally just like a bodysuit made of skin. After searching the river for days, the only thing that they are able to recover is one leg, like one lower part of the leg and 
a couple of items of clothing. They also find a portion of like a butt cheek. But other than this, nothing else has ever been retrieved from the Vistula River. Now, during this time, DNA evidence and like testing, it was not yet a thing in Poland. And the U.S. had just begun utilizing this technology. And so they enlisted the help of the U.S. FBI to help determine who this game belongs to. That is the first break in the case. They are able to positively identify this skin as belonging to Katarzyna, who had, of course, been reported missing two months prior and upon analyzing the condition of the skin and the leg it's very obvious to them that she had endured a lot of torture prior to this making it to the water they also determined that the removal of the skin happened while she was still alive and what is extremely odd to them is the fact that this person worked with extreme precision as if they had been trained to do this kind of thing. Now, as the pieces are coming together as far as what happened to her, they are still completely lost as far as who had done it and why. In the following months, this is still a question that they are unable to answer. Then in May of 1999, they receive a phone call in the same little town from an elderly man claiming that there is a body in a basement and he is absolutely certain that his grandson is the person who is responsible. And get this, the head of this body had been carefully removed and scalped with precision. Child, the more this man is telling them on the phone, the stranger the whole thing gets. Now, he had gone to the house to visit his son. But instead of finding his son, he finds the 26-year-old grandson, Vladimir, who is actually the son of his son. Obviously, it's his grandson and he's, you know, at the son's house. The grandson is walking around wearing the skin from the head like a mask. He answers the door, invites the grandfather in, pretending to be the son, pretending to be his father, whose skin he is wearing over his face. Meanwhile, the dad is really in the basement, hanging upside down headless. Now he hadn't just removed the skin and put it on. The boy had sewn the skin to fit snugly around his face and his own head and really believed that he was passing himself off as his father. Of course the elderly man is freaked out but he plays along for the moment and you know he dips off to call the police. When the police arrive the the son never even attempts to flee. He's still in the home with the the mask on, walking around looking like Michael Myers, okay? And of course, because how eerily similar this is to the skin removal that happened to Katarzyna, with Vladimir, of course, scalping his father and wearing it like a mask and them removing the skin and obviously resembling a bodysuit, they figured that this has to be the work of the same person. Like, Vladimir has to be responsible for both. And there is, of course, also the fact that it had happened in the same little town. I can see why they would assume that it's the same person. Unless this is just something y'all doing. Let me know. Once they begin questioning him about his father, they are not so sure that this is the case. The thing is, he is completely honest about what had transpired and his reasons for what he had done. He hated his father for cheating on his mother. And so he was very angry at him for that and simply believed that he could pass himself off as his dad if anybody, you know, stopped by. Chill. I don't know how he thought that was going to work, but that was that was it. However, when they question him about Katarzyna, he denies any knowledge or involvement in what happened to her. In addition to that, they are unable to link him to it in any way. No evidence is found that suggests that he had anything to do with it. They have Vladimir evaluated, which is obviously very needed, okay? Very much required. He is diagnosed with borderline schizoid personality disorder and subsequently sentenced to 25 years in prison for what he had done to his father. After they failed to find any sort of DNA evidence inside of his home that could tie him to Katarzyna, he is completely cleared of any suspicion in regard to that. Now her case goes cold for 15 years before they decide to exhume the skin and the leg and all of the evidence and try again. By this time they have a lot 
about more resources and, you know, like technology has advanced a lot. And so they decided to take a deeper look and hope that this time around they're able to find out what happened. They first put together a profile of the type of person that they will be looking for, the type of person that will commit such a crime, right? A white male in his 20s with sadistic tendencies, for one. Most likely trained in martial arts, a very specific type of martial arts. And they determined this, but would not say why. I don't know if they didn't want to like demonize this particular type of martial arts or what, but they refused to let the public know. They also determined that he most likely enjoyed like the torment and teasing of women and could very possibly have some prior run-ins with the law. In 2017, after spending two whole years re-examining this case and still not having any new evidence or finding any leads, they actually look up when a woman comes forward and tells them about this very creepy mechanic from the neighborhood who she is suspecting might be responsible. In conversation with him, she learned that he had served in the military and he had also worked in a morgue. Now that's not against the law. That ain't too suspicious. But what is suspicious is the fact that he had a seemingly obsessive interest in the case of Katarzyna. So much so that he tells her about how he'd go visit the girl's gravesite. Now, not only does he live directly off of the riverbank where she was found, he also fits the profile of the man that they believe would be responsible for this crime. Looking into his background, they find that Robert had a fairly rough childhood. His birth parents, maybe, maybe they knew what was up, okay? They gave him up at birth, leaving him to be then raised by his aunt. This aunt dies when he is just two years old. And I ain't completely convinced that he had nothing to do with that, even at two. Afterward, he is taken in by his paternal grandparents and unfortunately subjected to a lot of mistreatment, a lot of physical abuse, especially at the hands of his grandfather. And this takes place throughout his childhood. Something that I found interesting and worth noting was the fact that Robert's father had also endured abuse at the hands of his parents throughout his childhood. And it was so bad that he grew up and wrote a whole book about it. And in this book, he details an incident where his own mother had grabbed his hands when he was a young, small child and held them so close to a fire, threatening to burn them off. So I don't know if he didn't know that his son had landed into his parents' household. That very possibly could be the case because he stays with the grandparents until he's 11 years old. And then he is taken back in by his birth parents. So it's possible that they didn't know that he had landed there. And then when they found out, you know, they just figured they would keep the kid themselves. And so now at 11 years old, he is living in the household with his birth parents for the very first time. And it is far removed from the fairy tale and fantasy that he imagined it would be, which of course does not justify his actions. In school, he is a very naughty child, okay? He's very annoying, the classmates, the, the teachers, the staff at the school, none of them want to ever be around him. He is a troublemaker, a class clown, and very unpleasant to be in the company of. In his 20s, he is drafted into the army and he spends his time there working in a morgue. It is there that he realizes that he has this interest in dissection. And afterward, he goes on to work at the Zoology Institute. And these these interests, they do not leave him. Not long after he begins this job at the Zoology Institute, a number of animals are mysteriously killed and skinned. And every last instance happens in his care. Now, of course, he is questioned about this. And he does admit knowledge of, you know, the animal dying. However, he is unable to give an explanation about their sudden strange death and just pretty much figured that, you know, if they were dissected after the fact, what's the big deal? They're already, you know, they're already expired. And needless to say, they fired him, okay? They got him up out of there real quick. Shortly after him losing this job, a scandal erupts and rocks his little, his little family. His father has been having an affair and he has decided that now is the time that he is going to leave his wife for his new lover. As soon as he leaves the household, 
Him and his new flame, they get married and they have a child. And his father's new family dynamic is a lot different than the one that he had experienced himself. And so he kind of felt a way about that. And to add insult to injury, his mother decides to leave the country. She goes to Canada for a couple of years to live and I guess just clear her head and get, get a different life experience. Robert is then left to live all by himself. He has little to no contact with either of his parents. And granted, he is in his 20s, so it's not like he's a child or a teen. They're the only people that wanted to fool with him. And child quiet as a skip, they halfway didn't want to fool with him. And what happens during this time that he is left alone? Katarzyna goes missing. Now, he had come up on police's radar two years into their investigation when his own neighbors went to police and asked that they look into him as being a possible suspect. He had a well-known interest in skinning animals, tormenting animals, and he lived very close to where the skin, of course, was found. So they felt like, you know what, it had to be him. Like, who else would it have been? At the time, they did actually go out to the house to question him and take a look around his apartment. By this time, his mother had returned to Poland and was living there with him. He held his composure while the police were there. But as soon as they left, he drops down on the ground and begins rolling around, screaming and crying like a child throwing a tantrum about how he had not murdered Katarzyna. And this was all a setup from some people at the gym where he worked out. He spent a lot of time at this gym. And just like in school, he was not really well perceived or well liked. A lot of them thought he was really strange and again, unpleasant to be around. Now, weightlifting and bodybuilding was only one of the things that he did at the gym where he was now spending the bulk of his time and had been for a while. The other thing that he was up to down to the gym, martial arts. And in addition to all of this, the neighbors and a few of his associates claimed to have seen a significant change in Robert right around the time that Katarzyna had gone missing. He had all of a sudden become extremely obsessed with religion and began going to church daily. He was also visiting her gravesite regularly and leaving candles there burning and replacing them as they were burned out. They are also able to retrieve camera footage which shows him visiting her gravesite almost every night after sunset for years. In addition to the candles, sometimes he bring flowers for her and leave them there. And a couple of the cemetery employees claim that in the earlier years, he would bring letters and leave them. Now, none of these letters were able to be retrieved. And of course, this is like years on down the line. So who knows where they are? Or even if it's true, there was no solid evidence about the letters, just hearsay from the employees there. So we don't really know for sure. Now, her mother had visited her gravesite, of course, and noticed the flowers. She had also noticed the candles, never saw letters, but she figured that it must have been one of her friends that had come to visit the gravesite. And when he was not at the gym or at church, he just walked the town aimlessly for hours. And as far as his love life, he had had a couple of relationships here and there, but they'd ended really quickly due to his domineering and controlling personality. Another something that he enjoyed doing in his free time when he had the extra money to do so is going down to the cinema. And that is how he met Katarzyna. Now, initially he claimed to have never met her and there was no obvious signs of a relationship at first. But then they retrieve his diary. And in it, he had written about not only meeting her, but the two of them spending time together. He had also gone into detail about how the two of them became acquainted and full detail about her murder. I cannot go into full detail like play by play about the actual act itself because Poland does a really good job sealing that information and keeping their sealed information locked down. His diary was deemed classified and the details have not been released to the public like as far as exactly what he did to her only the fact that he had written in full detail about what he had done from this diary they are able to piece together what had transpired leading up to her final days Robert had actually spotted Katarzyna at a market while he was passing on his way to the cinema. He thinks she's very attractive. Instead of continuing on to where he was headed, he stands back for a while and watches her, paying attention to the things that she's looking at, things she's taking interest in, 
And then he goes over to the market and he fakes interest in those exact same things. He approaches her. He makes a couple of comments about the things that he had, you know, faked interest in, compliments her. And from her demeanor and her response, he can tell that she is somewhat flattered. The two of them have a short conversation about her favorite band. And then according to his diary, she decides to join him at the cinema to see the movie that he was headed to see. Over the following weeks, they spend a lot of time hanging out together. Apparently during the hours that she was supposed to be in school. And after a couple of weeks, Weeks, he convinces her to go on a short little getaway with him to a cottage on the outskirts of town right around mid-November of 98 the same time that she goes missing, of course. She agrees and is looking forward to this, so they take a bus to this secluded cottage for what Katarzyna had been made to believe would be a nice, beautiful outing where they could just relax and enjoy nature, each other's company, without the presence of, you know, anyone else. But unfortunately, it turns out to be a day of horror. Like I said, the details of the act itself have been kept from public knowledge. But we do know that he spent days torturing her. He removed her skin while she was still alive. And once it was removed, he tried it on. But it did not fit. Robert was a short, thick little man. And Katarzyna is taller than him and a lot thinner. So I don't know why he felt like in his mind that was going to work out. But obviously it did not. Frustrated, he leaves the cottage, taking the bodysuit with him home. And over the next couple of days, he continues to try it on, hoping that maybe he could stretch it out. Or that I guess magically, it'll be his size. Ultimately though, when things don't work out, he just decides to toss it into the Vistula River. Police immediately go out to this cottage and they search it. It does not take them long to find her blood inside of the bathroom. However, they are unable to find anything else of hers. There are no signs of the rest of her remains. Now, Robert maintains his innocence. He denies everything. Even with the DNA in the bathroom, he's still like, yeah, no, that didn't happen. He is currently still in prison where he continues to complain about harassment from prison guards. And it said that his claims of harassment by the prison guards was actually like investigated, but they couldn't find any evidence of it. I don't know if they really pulling his hair through the cell, through the cell bars and spitting his food. I don't know, but if they are, you know, I ain't mad at it. And I actually read somewhere that at the conclusion of the investigation surrounding his claims and them finding no solid evidence to prove his 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 claims, they actually added charges for lying to police. So hopefully that's the thing. I don't know for sure, but somebody said it was. As of 2019, he had not been released, nor had his trial began. And I believe it had something to do with, you know, the outbreak. Investigators did request a closed trial due to the nature of the crime and how high profile it is, which I thought was interesting because I don't know if that's a thing in the U.S. I feel like they just put your business out there. When you go to trial, you go to court, girl, everybody who wants to know about it has access to the information. Another factor in why it's taken so long to start the trial is the fact that there are over 900 pages to his indictment. The judge and of course the lawyers and prosecutors have to go through all of these pages. And it also did not help the fact that like halfway through the original judge was removed from the case and they had to put a different judge on it who had to then start from page one of 900. And so it's just it's just a lot of BS in the game. He finally stood before a judge on February 7th of 2021, just last year. And the latest hearing was on March 29th of this year. But because it is a closed trial and it's all being done in private, my nosy is couldn't find out what, what the outcome was exactly. I do know he is still very much locked away though. Very much still in jail. His father spoke to a newspaper in January of this year claiming his son's innocence and declaring his support of his son. He believes his son is innocent, child. He said, my son didn't do it. You knew your son wasn't right. That's why you ain't even want to deal with him. But that's all. It's a story for another day. His father says, and I quote, I am afraid that my wife and I will not live to see justice in the moment when my son will regain his freedom. Sir, you ain't gonna see it. I ain't gonna see it. It ain't happening. Sorry about it. So that pretty much sums up today's video. 
please let me know your thoughts on this case down below. This is one of the crazier ones. Like, I feel like every case that I've done has been interesting, but this one is like, girl, what's going on? I don't know why I just randomly thought about Vladimir again. And I know somebody's going to be like, Vladimir, Poland. Vladimir actually, you know, he got the 25 year sentence for what he did to his dad, but he apparently or allegedly did not like the Poland prison so much that he, he asked to be sent back to his homeland of Russia. And they actually sent him back over to Russia. So he is locked up in Russia currently. Please don't forget to like the video before you leave. Share the video with a friend. As always, I appreciate you so much for spending your time with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. Like, why is he trying to get in the hot tub with Bob? Come on, big girl. Good girl, you're doing so good. Hi, mommy. She's doing so good now. Hi, mommy. Don't you step off the step, girl. You're gonna take a... A step in the wrong direction as far as trusting this pool water. Oh Come on, big girl. Come on. Come on. Police conclude that there's nothing. What? Um, Bella, if you could just get out of the background, that would be real cute. No? Okay. Up until that point, her attention, not attention, what am I talking about? Her attendance, that's the word. And the you has, you has what? That is the first break in the case. They are able to positively, ugh. What did I say? Falling people, I don't know what y'all got going on. Why y'all like, you know, removing the skins like this, but Jesus Christ. But instead of finding his son there, he finds his 26, really? Now I ain't never been to Poland, child. I love, the closest I've been to Poland is a Polish sauce. Ugh. The closest I've been to Poland is a Polish, po why can't I say Polish? I know I didn't say this word before. Polish sausage. Jesus, that takes a lot. Ooh, wig itching cheese, Louise. Blue, really, you gonna snore like that in the background? Jeez Louise. Really, Blue? You just got off work or not? Like, don't you start. It's really chaos ensuing in the background. Jesus, take the wheel, child. He is completely cleared of any suspicion. What the f is the word? Suspicion in regard to that. And not only does he live directly off of the riverbank where, did I say river with a B? Am I a child? I guess you could say that he took his frustrations from his home life. What? Oh, but I gotta buy Gibby on tickets. Hold on, girl. All of which occurs with animals under his... <laughs> his father has been having an affair and she decides that, no, he, girl, no, I didn't call his daddy, she. And his father's new family dynamic is a lot different than the one that he ex experienced. <laughs> he dropped down to the floor and began rolling around like throwing a tantrum. A tantrum, what is a tantrum? A tantrum, girl, what are we talking about? of the things that he had been at the gym doing with, with yeah, what the fuck. But she figured it was just one of her friends coming to visit the, bleh. He'd also written about how the two of them became acquainted, ugh. One day while walking to the market, okay, no. One day, Robert had, okay, no. One day while he was walking on his way to the, okay. Ugh at a cottage yeah. to a cottage on the outskirts of town he ultimately just tosses it into the vistula river river Grr. but ultimately when things do not work out he also okay what Grr. Grr, Grr, Grr. however they are unable to find any Ugh. however they're Ugh. i'm not sure what happened to his mother 
She probably wants shit to do with him after that. She ain't want nothing to do with him in the beginning. 